Well, here we are, that crucial moment, uh, the two teams in the final, and we now need to know uh, who's going to be affirming and who is going to be oppo opposing. Uh, head... Where does Zimbabwe end up? Where does 2014 Where is Where is it in 2014? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's my age, right? Yes. Where is it in 2025? Oh, pass the microphone as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I'm about to toss the coin. Where is it in 2014? is the head and where is the 25 is the tail so who's calling it's it's a tall order it's a it's a tall order. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. no one called, no one called. oh we're we supposed to call it okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's Absolutely. So you choose whether you are affirming. You will affirm. And indeed, you know your positions. Silence is there not? Now, our topic for the final reads as follows Non clinical responses to HIV and AIDS, a waste of resources. Once again, Non-clinical responses to HIV and AIDS are a waste of resources. Affirmers, student one, I'll ask you again to give us your name and the program to which, towards which you're studying. My name is Ebenezer Kudita, um, economic student at the University of Zimbabwe. And your colleague? My name is Tracy Samaria Chwati, uh, an administration student at the University of Zimbabwe. Thank you. And student one for team two, your name and the program to which, towards which you're studying. Boni Zashe, Innocent Maruta, Forensic Accounting and Auditing, Harare Institute of Technology. Thank you. And your uh, partner? Tedwa Gondo, a student at HIT, studying Electronic Commerce. Electronic Commerce. Thank you. Uh, now, of course, we're using the adjusted Carl Popper debate format as we have been doing from the very beginning. Teams, are we ready? Thank you. We shall have uh, three minutes of an affirmative opening speech by student one uh, and that shall be three minutes, three minutes of which start right now panel and the house at large and the whole of Zimbabwe. We ought to understand that this debate, I know seemingly we may have the hard side, but we're going to show you how we're going to break down this debate and show you why we deserve to win ultimately the final. The first thing that we need to define is saying what a waste of time is and who we are talking about when we say waste. Because we're not just talking about generalization because there are many sources of funds. So we'll look at a particular stakeholder, I'll explain to you why we choose that stakeholder and I'll tell you why it's a particularly a waste of time for that particular stakeholder to intend in this venture. First of all, we're going to center this in, into a developing nations context because this is where these debates and these issues take place. We're going to center the argumentation in terms of the perspective of the governments of these developing nations because those are the largest stakeholders involved in those particular nations. So we're going to explain to the House why at this particular state of nation and this particular state of the economy of the developed nations is a waste of time for the governments to focus on non-clinical uh, treatments of HIV and AIDS, non-clinical responses. So when you talk about non-clinical 
responses were basically referring to how the treatments that don't necessarily involve medical procedures, for example, your therapy in terms of uh, HIV and AIDS counseling and all these things. We're going to show you how we think that those particular things in terms of the context that we're in, uh, we're not saying that they're bad, but we're saying that they're not what we should be doing right now and therefore, by consequence, a waste of time. So we're going to tell you that we live in a context where there is stigma amongst the whole thing. Because the reason for non-clinical responses is for stigma and to address stigma. But we're saying that when you tell, when you get AIDS and I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you about AIDS, it does not affect the way in which the rest of society does, which is one thing that, that this whole particular thing ignores. It focuses on the me and you, the personal between, oh, now you have AIDS, this is how you should do, don't kill yourself, it's not, something bad. But even if I've been told by someone I don't know that it's not something bad, if I go out into the larger society and the larger society still views that something's bad, we think that the two hours that you have spent in that particular clinical session or training is particularly a waste of time and not effective. So we think that when it comes to, in terms of the psychological aspect, it, it's, not, it's more than just the one-on-one -on -one training, but it's something that we should look for in a much broader spaces. That's the first argumentation. Secondly, we're going to tell you in terms of monetary terms and money expenses, right? We think that we're having situations in developing nations where we have substandard ARVs, where we have or shortages of ARVs, right? So we think that we know we should prioritize all our money to making sure that these people stay alive first before we focus on any other forms of treatment in that particular sector. Because what we want to do is save and prevent the um, the character and the quality of life before we start eventing in, 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 in other activities. So we're not saying that non-clinical things are bad. This is not where the debate is. No, we're not saying that. But we're saying that in a context of developing nations, what is it that most of their money should be channeled towards? Should we be channeled towards a one-on-one -on -one or non-clinical treatments which will not necessarily solve the problem or prioritize the safety and making sure that everyone who is affected by the HIV and AIDS virus number one gets the treatment that they deserve not just any treatment not just cheap knockoff drugs from China but proper quality treatment of ARVs to pro prolong length of life and then when that is done we can then look after also we'll tell you that how there are many organizations that help but for the government specifically to preserve life time And in a minute, student two, you've got the opportunity uh, as an opposer to cross-examine. Your minute starts now. Mr. Speaker, what is your definition of wastage? The definition of wastage is with a particular resources available at the time. If the particular action involved does not maximize the use of the resources, then that is a waste of resources. Are you aware of the never-ending funds for HIV in this world, not only in Zimbabwe, but in the whole universe? And this is what I'm saying, which is why I, when I started the debate, I established context, that which perspectives are we looking for? Because if we start talking about the funds from the United States and all these things, yes, it's never-ending. But I'm saying from the Zimbabwean government point Mr. of Speaker, view... Mr. Speaker, are you aware, yes or no? I'm explaining, answering your question. You don't tell me I'm how to answer I'm limiting the bros to which you can answer my question. No, you can't tell me how to answer your question. I'm sorry. I'm saying that there are certain ways and we so we're talking about government, it's limited funds. It's not unlimited as you like to suggest. True or false, every clinical and non-clinical test comes with counselling? Uh, true. So how then is counselling and non-clinical measures a waste of time when it's also you talk about, in the clinical? You're talking about treatment. I'm talking about, we're talking about testing. I'm talking about responses after the testing. I was talking about there goes the, min the minute. You can take this outside. <laughs> we shall have the opposer's opening speech uh, by student one, and that shall be three minutes, three minutes of which start now. Now, to commence with the argument of the non-affirmative delegation, let me begin by giving you the definitions which we're going to be using for the purposes of this debate. Now, for, to define non-clinical responses, now what, we're, what we mean by non-clinical responses is basically non-medicine-based and orthodox approaches that are used to, to, to respond or to redefine respond is to react to uh, HIV and AIDS. And a waste of resources is basically to say that it is a, a waste of resources is a gross misuse of funds or of time or abilities or anything else that has been channeled towards a particular agenda. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now as I have pointed out this definition, this, this redefined motion as brought forward by the non-affirmative delegation, let me point it out that the definition of wastage of resources that has been presented by the affirmative delegation is, is wrong because they said that the definition of wastage of resources is not used something to its maximum to, to its maximum potential but when you're using
using something to its 99% potential and not its 100% potential does that mean that you are wasting it? No. To waste something is to grossly misuse it, which is different from the agenda for which it has been made available for. Now, the main points that we are going to be articulating for you during the courses of this debate is that these non-clinical responses and the clinical responses go hand in hand. Now, it is not possible for us to just focus on one thing and say that this is good or this is bad. And it's not possible for us to say that this wastes resources and this uses resources to the best optimum level. That is not possible. There is nothing in this world that is 100%. These things need to be used at the same time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, according to the definition of the wastage of resources that I provided to you, non-clinical responses of HIV and AIDS are not a waste of resources. Why? Because it is not a gross misuse of those funds. These are the same funds that have been channeled towards responding or reacting to the problem of HIV and AIDS in our, of HIV and AIDS in our society. Now, whether we're going to be using that for, 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 for clinical or for non-clinical, that is beyond the question. But the fact is, are we using the funds for HIV and AIDS response purposes? That is the main, that is the main argument. And if we are using it for HIV and AIDS response purposes, then it is not a gross misuse. It is working for what it has been provided for. That is the main, that is the main argument that we are expressing is the non-affirmative delegation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the, the first speak of the, of the non, of the, of the affirmative delegation say that it is it, 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 because because it is possible to use medicinal or, or, or the clinical which are which are apparently better because apparently you get more counseling well, well we get counseling on both sides and even if we, we are deciding that we want to use medicinal and you say that it is a one-on-one -on -one thing that does not involve the society ladies and gentlemen people will see you go there and the moment people see you go to get those responses they will know what is wrong with you and then you will start to become the laughing stock of whatever it is that you've been trying to avoid from the first place with this arrest my case and you rest it uh, just as time goes. An affirmative cross-examination follows. Student 2, you've got a minute and it starts now. Uh, Mr. Speaker, say, how do you define a waste? Now, as I have said, a waste is a gross misuse of a facility, fund, time or ability that has been channeled towards a particular So what purpose. then is the difference between a gross misuse and a misuse? Well, gross is just, in a, it's just a point of extent, well, but it does not mean that a misuse and a so gross if misuse it's a point are different. Of, it's just an if, issue So if of it's a point of, of extent, extent, then you mean that it's still misuse, but the extent is the, what is different? No, there's a difference between misuse what and is using the it for What is the difference? The difference between misuse and using it for the for the correct ability is when you are using it for the correct ability, you're using it for the purpose for which it has been provided for. But when you are misusing it, it means that you are not using it for the purpose which has been provided for. And so what is this correct? The correct use is to provide these funds for responses to HIV and AIDS infections, which is exactly what you're doing when you're providing non-clinical responses to HIV and AIDS infections. And is it time? Yes. Thank you to the timekeeper. Uh, well, 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 well. We shall now have our opposers rebuttal by student number two. This shall take two minutes, two minutes of which start now. I caught the first speaker of the affirmative delegation who came here and mentioned about ARVs, the difference between how we should use funds and, and use them to produce ARVs that are actually better instead of having ARVs from China. But ladies and gentlemen, you are saying ARVs, whether they are from China, whether they come from America, they are ARVs and they will serve their purpose at the end of the day. That's their point, holds no water. A moment of silence for that point that has been buried and never to be resurrected. <coughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, he fed that went on to mention about how the money that is used for non-clinical testing should be, should be used for something else. But ladies and gentlemen, we're saying that the money that is being used for these non-clinical responses is actually saving lives. How so, ladies and gentlemen? We're saying that these non-clinical responses are, pr are proving to be providing rehab and counseling for these people who have HIV and AIDS. Ladies and gentlemen, if I come to you right now and I tell you that you have HIV, you might even die before you are even sure that you have that HIV, which is why we're saying these non-clinical responses are not a wastage of time, simply because they are actually aiding cancer for the people to be educated so that they can know that they have a better chance of surviving in society which is showing how this is not a wastage of time 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is another point that has been raised by the affirmative delegation that holds no water in this debating session. Now, I shall move on to, our, to further strengthening our key, our key points because the, that is the only point that the affirmative delegation only introduced in this debating session. Now, as a non-affirmative delegation, we are saying that these non-clinical responses are there for a reason, ladies and gentlemen. Some person can choose to respond in a clinical manner, but another person can respond better to a non-clinical manner. So why don't we cater for that minority, whether it's minority or majority? The main point is to save lives in society, ladies and gentlemen, which is why we are saying that non-clinical responses are not a wastage of time. They are serving the same purpose that those clinical responses are also providing, which is why we're saying they are not and will never be a wastage of resources in society. Thank you. Time. Also, a moment of silence for the presenter. I, I died. I, I died. It's dead, 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 dead. If I was an emoji, ah, dead. Okay, uh, and uh, for the affirmative, we have a rebuttal by student uh, number two. That's two minutes, two minutes of which start now. The non-affirmative side claims to have buried our point, but like Lazarus, it's about to rise again. They talk about ARVs, but ARVs are a clinical measure or are a clinical response to HIV and AIDS, which is not the point of debate today. The point of debate today is about non-clinical responses. Are they a waste of time? Yes, they are a waste of time. Why? We live in an African society where we are yet to embrace things about depression, dealing with depression and talking about things. We still need to address the things about discrimination and stigma in our societies. So that then if you talk, if you tell me that I'm HIV positive and you tell me everything is going to be okay, is that going to help me? I'm still going to die. My CD4 count is still going to be reduced. Why? Because I need ARVs because they're the ones that can boost my CD4 count. So what are we saying? Clinical responses, they are the ones that work because biologically they are the ones that work. Non-clinical responses, well, not so much. Telling me that I'm not going to die when I have a disease that is threatening my life cannot help me so much and telling me that it's okay, everything is okay and I walk out of this room and I get into a society where everyone is telling me that I'm going to die is what will kill me. So we need to educate the society when we're talking about these issues to do with HIV and AIDS, not telling me on a one-on-one -on -one basis. The non-affirmative side talked about how lives are changing, they talked about how ARVs are the solution. Yes, they are the solution and they are clinical, not non-clinical. A point of correction there. So it looks like it's their point that has died, not our point. Our point has just resurrected. Moving on, I'd like to talk about how uh, HIV and AIDS has two groups, the infected and the affected. Non-clinical responses focus on the infected persons. What about the affected persons? It doesn't focus on that. So if it doesn't focus on the affected persons, then it means it's not embracing the whole group. Therefore, it is a waste of resources. Governments in developing countries need to be focusing Sorry. on. Thank you. Of course, we've got a live studio audience and we've also got people who are watching us uh, from all over the world on our Facebook platforms, ZTN and uh, Say What. And if you're only just joining us in a non-clinical response to your pain, I will tell you, you're going to be all right because at least you're in time to see the dying embers of what has been an amazing, amazing day. And now we get to the opposer's closing remarks. Student one, you have a minute and 30 seconds to bid us farewell. Now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is important for, as I conclude this debate that, that I note that just because you don't like something, that doesn't mean that it should be eradicated completely. Now, ladies and gentlemen, non-clinical responses are something which is being actively used in society. It is actively helping people. And just because some people think it is a waste of resources, that doesn't mean, could, that, doesn't mean that it should be eradicated completely. Why? Because it is actually helping people in our society. It has actually saved lives. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the first, the second speaker of the non-affirmative side say that it does not help to, 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 to simply talk to somebody on a one-on-one -on -one stage, but awareness is the first step towards responding to somebody who has got HIV and AIDS. And this is the one point that we've been bringing to you as the non-affirmative delegation, that it is impossible for us to simply discount non-clinical responses as a waste of resources. Why? Because they are actively helping people. And because, and even though they may not be medicinal or 
biological, even though they are psychological, they are actively helping people in our society. And by just chucking them out of the system, we are going to we are, we are going to lose a lot of lives. Not not to not to mention the distress that is going to be caused. And the the first week of the non affirmative delegation actually alluded to the fact that we are developing countries and we cannot afford to lose these lives. They are so important to us, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as I conclude this debate on, the, on behalf of the non affirmative delegation, we are standing bold, firm, and unshaken that non-clinical responses to HIV and AIDS are not time. Well, um, just because we are close to the end of today's debating, uh, it does not mean kuti. <laughs> I just had to do it. I, I, just, I, I just... I just... I just had to. Um, uh, Kuti, we don't have other things that we we have. Um, we've got on Zen Paper Television Network a, a program called Heartbeat. It follows, um, of course, our health, which is our wealth. Proudly also sponsored by Say What. We've got the Chase. We've got uh, the Zen Papers Cancer Walk that is coming soon on the 9th of November. We've got the Couch uh, Football Program. So there's a lot of uh, stuff that happens on this your esteemed network and there's a lot to look forward to apart from today's exciting exciting day so we have a lot of other things and of course now the affirmative closing remarks uh, from student number one that shall be a minute and 30 seconds which starts now okay the debate is finished so we now need to decide the winner they come and then they try and twist our definition of saying that no, waste is grossly misexaggerated. But that's not where the chat was. The debate was we defined wastage as something that is not being used appropriately given limited funds. That is a very clear and fair definition which was unfair of them to come and force us down a definition that will automatically make us lose because you can't expect us to argue in 100% terms. First mistake that they made. Secondly, we gave you two criteria as why there's not an efficient use of resources and therefore by extension a waste of time. We told you that number one, it's not as effective as the like make you think because the issue of stigma is not a one-to-one -one basis but it's an issue of society so even if i use nine clinical methods or one individual if the whole of society still views hiv and aids as an issue that rehabilitation the psychological help i've gotten is not as effective as it would be so we'd rather engage the society rather than individuals secondly we tell you that in terms of governments of these of these countries they have limited funds and these nations are characterized by shortages of a arvs they conceded that the most, the thing that they value the most is loss of life and preventing loss of life. So under their own criteria, let's judge the debate. We are saying let's focus our money on getting good quality ARVs to each and every single infected person. That should be where all or priority of our money should be spent on. They are saying that no, we should spend on nine clinical lives, which is not a guarantee. But we're saying ARV at first, we save lives. We save lives first, which is what we're saying, and then we can do nine clinical, we can rehabilitate you when your life has been saved. And we're saving lives time that wraps up our grand finale that was uh, of course the debate we were all waiting for however uh, I'm a very privileged person because as the judges will be deciding who has taken that uh, coveted trophy which shall be on display very soon we shall be having the judges select that is uh, the the presenters select I beg your pardon and I have selected uh, two teams that shall come and battle it out. And they shall be talking about uh, introduction of dress code in universities. So should we introduce a dress code in universities to end sexual harassment? And those who are saying yes, we should uh, are going to be Tadliwa Daka and Mdudu Zimube and those that are going to be saying no we do not want the dress code the dress code does not end sexual harassment shall be uh, Maria and Ebenezer there, there was quite a bit of fighting between them so we decided to they should just play house and be a very happy couple and um, they shall be on the same side um, after after this. Of course, we shall be uh, taking a break as our uh, judges uh, tally uh, the scores and of course as our teams in this select uh, get together 
and start mapping a way forward. Uh, but stay tuned. <laughs>